Hello. <laughs> okay. Um, today we, uh, you have the pleasure to listen my good English. Okay, today we talk about the distributed content management. I don't know if you have any idea about that. Someone has, someone, uh, has uh, an idea? What is? Don't be shy. Okay, no one. Fantastic. Can I say whatever I want? Okay, <clears throat> this, is this is me. I'm Daniele Biagesi, I'm the technical director of Bimeme. Bimeme is uh, um, a factory, a digital factory based in Rome that works on uh, some technologies but is really focused on Drupal uh, since 2009. Um, we work on web, mobile, integration of software, UX and UI design, and uh, on the front-end development. Um, this talk starts from um, a, a real situation we happened, because um, um, in these last months uh, um, some customers, uh, different customers, um, ask us a, a possible solution to solve a, a big problem. Big customer often could have the, the need to connect some information that have behind in the, um, their IT infrastructure with the part, uh, with the web, with the web front end. And we start to think about the solution based on Drupal. And uh, Googling, Googling a lot about that, to know better the situation, the context, the scenario, uh, we found the term, this phrase, distributed content management, with a lot of different definitions. Uh, it's very difficult to um, understand, really, um, what is behind uh, this kind of phrase if you don't have a, a really good definition of that. And we try to create an hour definition. Content management responsibilities in an environment must to be distributed across an entire organization. What does it mean? When, when the company is bigger, when the organization is very big, it's probably that the responsibility of production of content, of, pro of publishing of content, could be distributed in different divisions of the company or of the organization. And this is the first step. Then there's another need that often is asked by a customer. I have just some information about, about something that defines the, the, the company or the organization. For example, a product, okay? And uh, I want to connect my, for example, product DB to my web layer without to rewrite information by hand from the CRM, for example, or another software you want, to the content management system that I use on the front end. On the internet, we found an interesting set of blog posts uh, made by FFW agency. Uh, that is um, um, an agency, a digital agency, European digital agency that works on Drupal um, with a very good blog. This kind of needs, um, the, in this post that I set here, <laughs> is named Distributed Management of Contents. 
This R, this other, is called management of distributed of contents. There is an error. It's evident. <laughs> management of distributed contents. Then, we thought that these two concepts could be the two roots concept that we think that uh, uh, could be in the definition of distributed content management. I don't know if it's so clear, but in our humble opinion, the distributed content management refers to the processes and, the, and flows and technologies used for, by a company or an organization to create, coordinate, and enrich the digital experience and the digital content. But probably, you need an example. Do you need an example? Uh, <laughs> I see. <clears throat> okay. To make a good example, to make a good example for you, we need a company. Uh, we, we need a big company. Okay. With. Uh, a complex infrastructure with uh, um, a, a distribution information in uh, several applications, okay? But in, we today are imaging a paint company, okay? For example, a paint company, a great big paint company. What does this company have now? A product DB made, for example, on uh, an older application with, uh, I don't know, uh, made from scratch, for example, cast, totally custom with an Oracle DB or um, a, other kind of big infrastructure, um, EBM, something like this, in which this company stores information, raw information, of, um, of its product, okay? I don't know, for example, um, green paint, I have a code, I have a, a technical sheet, security sheet, something like that. But these aren't information that could be rewrite it on the front end without enrich them with digital information, a good image, um, an emotional content, something. This big company have more than one website, one from country, because the composition, for example, and the type of products is, uh, it sells, is different between, I don't know, uh, United States and France, okay? Because there are different laws, because there are different markets, etc. Obviously, in this situation, a company that have two or more front-end website probably have different regional editorial staff. I can imagine an editorial staff that works on Europe, based in some, uh, somewhere, okay? For example, in Paris, that write content, that publish images, okay? To enrich content, to give some information to the customer, to try to sell this, the product of the company. In the other part of the ocean, there are another staff that do the, sa the same thing on another application that probably could be also different from the, up from the application content management that is used on the 
um, on, on the Europe country. Okay. <clears throat> what is the, the objective? What does this company would have? They would share some content between countries, but without rewrite them. Okay? Writing once, just once. They want to share product, the product info taken by the product DB, and push them to the front end without the rewrite and enrich this information with digital contents that could be important to, 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 to sell the product, basically. And they want to maintain the editorial staff really separated for the reasons we explained later. Because could be different laws, different market, different kind of products, categories of products, um, different sheet, okay, composition of this product. We are we're talking about in this case in this case, for example, we're talking about chemical product and vice versa. Then we try to imagine a, possi a possible solution for that. And this is the solution. We need to centralize all the information, all the digital information, into a content manager, a doc, that we called content repository. What is the scope? The scope is, to, is that this content repository can host all editorial content in order to make this available on, on the different countries. Because I can imagine that, for example, the About Us page could be the same, okay? Or other information, other contents could be the same between the different region website, regional website. But the content repository gets product info from the product DB and can give to the editorial staff the features to enrich them with other editorial data. This is, for me, one of the most important points because the separation we talked about uh, is important that, is, that, that will be built in into the content repository. The content repository have to know, has to know that we can have more than one regional need, more than one regional staff, different editorial groups, and that can use the same um, instrument, the same application at the same time, uh, writing contents, different contents that have to be published only on the uh, predefined front end. The front end retrieve data from content repository on the basis of the regional separation. Then the um, imagine we saw later change and change more or less in this way. We have the same product DB. We have the same regional website. We have the same regional editorial staff divided by country. But we put the content repository in the middle. The content repository became an hub between the product information, product raw data of the company, the regional websites, and the editorial staff. The product database exposes information via web services, obviously, to the content repository that could 
retrieve data from this source and probably from, the, from other source, sources, okay? And made it available on the, on the content repository to be enriched in a second moment. The regional editorial, the American regional editorial staff could use the, the information retrieved by the product database, collect, enrich with new images, prizes, why not? Visual, emotional content, okay. And the content repository could collect information, contents that are ready to be published on the front end, on the right front end. The same for the European staff, but what is another our objective? To do this, we could need that an information stored by the, the editorial, the European editorial staff could be available on the American regional website. With this approach, we, we think that we can um, reach the objectives we have uh, uh, at the, uh, the start of this talk, then decentralize the editorial responsibilities because there are different regional staff that could be divided in different divisions <clears throat> that are responsible of the contents published on the website. We avoid the duplication of editorial contents because I don't need to copy and paste, for example, a page in English on the American website and paste it to the CMS of the European website in the same language. We have virtually separated the editorial space, but not the generated content. And we have physically separated data and contents from the presentation layer. And this last point, take with them some other implications, just like um, a better management of the load of the application, for example, a protection of the important data. Then we can manage front-end more lightweight, because we can have also only a simple application made with uh, HTML, AngularJS, something like that. We talk about, about an example. Now, now it's more clear. Wow. But this, the, the same concept, we, we can put the same concept in other situation with other implication and probably with other needs and with a little bit different solutions. But the schema, I think, could be the same. For example, imagine an university, okay? That what centralized the creation of its content for any faculty, only one, only one content repository, different website for faculty, different languages for faculty. Imagine a pharmaceutical industry that is an example that could be very similar to the example we have done, because we probably have um, uh, the, the Fermax with uh, um, information uh, uh, about the composition, etc. For example, for a travel or tour operator that could have only a subset of the information in its DB about the, I don't know, the travel, the flights, okay, code, raw information that could be enriched. And there are many, many other, other examples. Okay. 
This is the best slide. <laughs> no, sorry. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> okay, this is, we said that this is a content repository, but now we are here talking about Drupal, then we can simply imagine that this could be Drupal. And we choose to test this idea, uh, which is Drupal 8. Drupal 8. <laughs> uh, why Drupal 8? Okay, it's clear. It's the new version. Okay, it's the it's stable since almost one year. Then we could be ready to talk about that, and we talk about that from a long time. But for us, it is very important to focalize your attention to some point um, of Drupal 8 that you couldn't find in Drupal 7, and that could be the uh, really good point to start from to realize some kind of architect this kind of architecture. For, okay, what we really need? Okay, we're, uh, we need a robust modular scalable CMS, and it's clear, okay? But we need really a good system of caching and the caching page, because all our, trans all our transaction is via web services. Then I, I have to be sure that when I update a content on my content repository or I create a new content on my content repository, in a little bit of, in, in, in less time, I can <clears throat> update the front end. We need a good multi language system. Because any country, in the example we, 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 we made, could be different languages. I can have uh, the language English or Spanish, French in the US zona, and uh, English, Italian, Spanish, French in the Europe zone. Obviously, we need a restful application. And this, a system to divide the editorial users in groups where they can create, edit, aggregate, delete group contents or decide to share them with other groups. Then, okay, Drupal is for sure a robust, modular, and scalable CMS. Drupal 8 have a good system of caching at the caching using the new system of caching tag, okay, caching dependencies, etc. Drupal 8 have a good multilingual system. It's a restful application. And this is the point, uh, the, the, the sympathetic point. Because when, when we try to uh, put in place this, this architect, we have only one doubt. How can we divide different editorial stuff in groups that can manage only a part of the, of the application? Okay, the, the, the response I think is, the, the answer I think is quite simple because um, Probably you know very well the group, mo the group module for Drupal. Um, but we never used before. We use organic group. We know the possibility of an organic group. This is not the place in which I, we can talk about groups because uh, there was a talk about that yesterday. But we try to create an infrastructure like this, uh, in, in, in a little proof of concept, obviously, using group. Okay. 
take a look at the POC. Basically, sorry, but Okay. We started from uh, um, a vanilla installation of Drupal. We create a group type named country. And we created two different country, Europe and North America. We enable some content, but when we start to use this, um, when you start to implement this POC, we found suddenly a, a need because we didn't want to manage only nodes, okay? And we found that it was very, very simple to um, add a new, new entities on group content. And this is what we've done, because we had the block content. What we've done was to create then some article, okay, here, some blocks. It is a system very, very simple. We, we created two kind of content types, one for a slideshow, one for a service, and we try to services, Im imaging uh, services of a, of a company, um, and we try to create a block that could reference these, node, these nodes to aggregate this information in only one service, but only for the POC, um, that uh, could be re uh, fetched and retrieved by a uh, front-end application that we made in just, I don't know, eight hours, not more, um, to, to, um, to create something to, um, to give you in this, in this talk. And we used the pages system only because the, this is, at the moment, the, 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 the simpler system to aggregate blocks into only one page, to aggregate this block. And we write a simple, we wrote a simple REST resource to publish Uh, It's better. Okay, it's not very important to see the code. Okay, it's not very important, but just just to give you the sensation that with not more lines of code and not more building, we can do that. Okay, we created a REST resource with this report. Abi groups, the group, the page, and then 
we use this information to collect an object and add some cacheable dependencies to the cache, the, um, um, the, the service when one of the nodes included on it was changed. This is what we done. Just a, a second. Okay, okay. Come to Swiss. So, please. Ma no, ma era. Ah, ma stava proprio facendo questa cosa, non me lo accorto. No. Bene, peraltro. Sorry, we didn't have time to transfer application from Purple. Oh. Marco di sta qua tutto il tempo, tieni sto coso. <ride> Dai, lo tengo io. Ok. Ok, this is the this is a simple template. Okay, we downloaded from Team Forest. Very, very simple. Um, behind that was AngularJS. Okay. Here there was Okay. <laughs> Very quickly. Here there was content. Okay. Okay. Slideshow for Europe, North America, and etc. What happens if we try to change? Okay, try to change the first slider. With someone else. Okay. <laughs> che fortuna. Ah. 
Okay. Then we change the, the first slide show, the first image of the slide show of the home page of, Euro of the Europe home page. I don't know. I. Uh, Okay. It's <laughs> Maybe this is not in the same in the same queue. Okay. Anyway, I don't want to lose other time because the, I have only five minutes, but. Uh, with the, 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 the message is that with not more lines of code and not more building, we done something that could, that would, will not solve our problem now, but give us an idea. Um, give us a, a, an idea in, in which we can manage this kind of situation. Okay, I want to anticipate a question that you probably could give me. I could do the same with Drupal 7. Obviously, yes, I could do the same because I have this, a CMS, I have, a, I have group, okay? But I have some other false friends. This is a small comparative. REST resources in Drupal 7 is a contrib module with a, pod, we, we, we a menu callback. In Drupal 8 is a core feature managed by routing. The Cache API is substantially different. The multi-language was a contrib module. You can use entity translation, for example, that we know has some bug, some si different situation in which, you, in which they can involve. Drupal 8 is a feature of the core. Groups, only group remain the same. Probably on Drupal 7, group is um, an higher state of development. But I can assure, uh, I, I think that uh, could be nice for you to try to see the group system, the group content enabling, because it's very, very cool. Um, but I, I can say that in, in this, in, in, for this talk, I had um, wrote I wrote uh, the, um, the enabling of the block content. I wrote this module in, I don't know, two, three hours, not more. I am quite sure that I, if I try to do the same with Drupal 7, probably three, four days, then I think that for this kind of situation, your time in which you implement your, your solution could be really, really improved. Then, for me, it's all, and uh, sorry for the example, because it was very difficult. If you had some question, if you have something to say, I'm here. Sorry. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, okay, I repeat. Um, in which way I, I managed the transition of data from the product DB and uh, the Drupal instance? Okay, in, in my example, I didn't. Okay. Uh, but the idea could be really simple because uh, if my 
product database exposed by services the information about products, I can sync this information all, always by services and uh, collect this information on the content repository. Because I think that in the content repository some information could, could, um, could be redundant. Okay, because some um, raw information stored in the product DB, in, in, in my humble opinion, eh, uh, are in content information, are digital informations. Okay, then that's all basically. I think I I didn't try to implement something like this because I think it, this is the more simple things I can do. Okay, in, in, in my situation then. This is not a real situation, and the scope of this talk is not to, um, to tell you um, a project we made, but a story in which we are imagined to be involved. Okay? Okay? Other? Okay, guys, nice to meet you.